This video picks up where the last one left off. So this idea of word problems, right? And, and going in there and finding out, okay, there's mention of string and then there is an angle of elevation and that value is 27. And so that needs to convert to some sort of a diagram. So once we've translated uh, all of the words, so the string obviously is easy to find. Um, height is easy to understand. Angle of elevation is from the horizon up. Once we diagram this, really this just becomes a nice basic little trig problem and we can just pull this aside. And then we just say, all right, so what do we know? We know um, we want our opposite. We have our hypotenuse. We have our angle. And this just becomes the sine of 27 degrees is h over 30. And in a previous video, we learned that when our unknown is in the numerator, it's just simply the sine of 27 degrees times 30. And this will obtain our answer, which is approximately 13.62 feet is what we're doing. Yep. And that's all it is, just uh, set up a, an equation and then solve it. The tricky thing, of course, is making the diagram. So let's just practice with the ones we already did. So this one speaks about a ladder uh, leaning against a wall, reaches a window at 18, and what we want is the angle. So again, we want to translate that into some sort of right triangle environment. Let's try that. So maybe it turns into something like this where we have our ladder, which is the hypotenuse. The window that we're leaning up against is 18. And the angle we want is the angle formed at the foot of the ladder down here. So again, um, let's just designate what we have here. This is an opposite side, and this is a hypotenuse. And we want this. So this is sine again. Um, so we would say the sine of our unknown angle, theta, is 18 over 20. And we know that when we have um, the ratio but not the angle, we use the inverse function to obtain this. And when we do that, we get approximately 64.16 degrees. Typically, we go to two decimal places just as a convention. But certain problems may ask for a different level of accuracy. Traditionally, we struggle with this one about the guy wire, partly because, again, we struggle with what that is, but that's some sort of a, a brace or a wire. And it's attached to the tree four feet above the ground. And then um, the angle formed between the wire and the tree is 70. That's huge. Let's see if we can get that diagram correct. So when it talks about attached to the tree four up, so again, the, the height is four here. Um, the angle at 70 is with the wire and the tree, so that's why it's in this spot. And I want to find the wire that's kind of holding the tree in place. So let's take a close look at what that would represent. Um, if this is our angle, then this would be the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So this is a cosine question. The cosine of 70 degrees is the adjacent, which is 4, um, divided by x. Now we learned that when we have x in the denominator, basically that solves out to be 4 divided by the cosine of 70. And that approximates out at 11.70 feet long. Yeah. Um, you'll notice if you do this, the rounding brought me to the zero in that position. The trick here is students often get that angle of 70 in the wrong place, but it did say it was with the wire and the tree, so be careful with stuff like that. Helicopter and plane questions all kind of have some of the same stuff going on. Um, they use the term um, like altitude sometimes to talk about the height instead of the height, uh, but here we find out that he's 110 from the landing pad. So we have to think about like a, a landing pad of some sort, you know, like the, and so he's, you know, he's over here at 110 away from that location, okay? And then you have your helicopter that is up 
in the air, um, you know, making noise and so on. So this is kind of our, our look here. Now it says that uh, the angle of, he looks up, so that helps us to know that that's our angle of elevation, and we want to know how high our helicopter is. This happens to be, um, if we think about the relationships here, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent, and my angle, this is just a tangent. So this would be the tangent of 65 is h over 110. Uh, again, when your variable is in the numerator, it just becomes the multiplication of those two things. So it's 110 times the tangent of 65. And our approximate height would be 235.5. 9.0 feet in end. And again, that's our approximate value, but it would represent our height from here to here. And that probably, I mean, number-wise makes sense that it would be, you know, a fairly large number if your helicopter is up in the air. As described before, when you talk about shadows and things like that and sun's rays, these ones kind of work in a particular way. Um, you know, you got your Got your sun. Let me just change that to a nice brighter yellow. There we go. There's our sun. Um, we've got our ground. Um, we've got an individual standing, standing there, nice and tall person. And those rays come on down and hit the ground. Now these are the rays um, that are casting a shadow on the ground. And again, the shadow will always be on the ground. Now. It says that those rays strike the ground at 62, so that's why we're 62 here. It says that the shadow is three feet long. And what we want to find is the height of our, of our person. And this is just simply um, a nice little problem involving tangent, where we would say the tangent at 62 degrees is the height of the man opposite over the shadow. Again, h is in that numerator spot, and so h becomes just 3 times the tangent of 62, and h becomes approximately 5.64 feet. All right, and that uh, wraps that one up. Let's do one more with an angle of depression. But each of these are just trying to show you that idea of, you know, how do I take words, right? How do I take words and turn them into pictures? And if you see a couple, then you always do a little bit better with them. So this one is probably the trickiest of the group, and we kind of already previously talked this through, but um, the lighthouse tower has a certain height. That's not the tricky thing. Um, we spot a ship at an angle of depression. We're looking down at an angle of depression, and we want to know how far the ship is from the base of the lighthouse. So again, let's diagram that up. So this portion is usually what gets done correctly, which is the height of 30, yeah, and knowing how far we are from the base, yeah. But the part that gets done incorrectly usually is the angle of depression is 10. Now what that means is the person is looking down from the horizon. So the 10 actually goes into this position. Now you have a couple of options you can work with like this upper triangle if you would like but generally I find most students take this angle and realize that because of those horizons that this angle down here is equal to that same 10 degrees and if you move it down into this position you now have uh, the lower triangle that you can just work with the data so this is tangent because here's my opposite here is my adjacent and I have my angle so let's just slide it over just a little bit. And this would be the tangent of a 10 degree angle is 30 over x. x is in the denominator. And so we know that this becomes x equals 30 divided by the tangent of 10 degrees. And x, or our distance our boat is from the base, is approximately 170 point one four feet away all right and that's the idea of of these kinds of questions the key my friends is to just like diagram it out and ultimately everything just turns into a right triangle doesn't it 
Like that's the whole point of this. Everything that you will make is just becomes a right triangle, but you just have to get the labeling correct. Good luck with it.